Hey guys, I'm Abigail Lee. I'm a 4-H state ambassador this year and I'm from Covington County and today I have the privilege of interviewing Mr. Derek Colbert. He is a district wildlife biologist with the Connecticut National Forest and I'll, I'll let you take it from here, Derek. Thank you, Abigail. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'll just start off. You Thankfully, sent me a couple questions ahead of time, so I appreciate that. I was able to prepare a little bit, and uh, I see here your first question was, uh, what was my major in college? So kind of how did I get into this position? Um, I, uh, I received my Bachelor's of Science in Forest Resources with an emphasis on wildlife management in 2011, and uh, I received that from the Warnell School of Forestry and Natural Resources at the University of Georgia and uh, decided close to the end of that degree that um, I wanted to keep going and try to pursue an even higher degree. So I actually followed that up with a master's of science uh, in 2013 from Warnell as well, stayed at the University of Georgia for another two years to complete that degree. And um, since then, I've had a couple of great experiences jumped on with the, uh, the federal government and went up to New York, worked up there for about five years with the current agency I'm with, which is the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Uh, at that time, I was working with um, specifically wildlife services. They focus more so on wildlife damage management conflicts. Uh, so, you know, as our as our populations and uh, epicenters grow and kind of expand out into the natural world, there tend to be kind of conflicts on the edges, edges of those areas with people and with wildlife. And so that's what that agency focused on resolving. And then about two years ago, I accepted my current position, which is, as you mentioned, wildlife biologist with the Forest Service, also with the Department of Agriculture. And uh, specifically, I work here in uh, Covington County on the Conecuh National Forest. Um, and been loving that position. I'm looking forward to speaking with you a little bit more today about what all goes into that position as a biologist uh, on the National Forest. Yes, sir. So what is like your day-to-day -day life as a biologist? Like, what does your day look like? So my current position, I have a uh, supervisory responsibilities. And so what does that mean? It just means that uh, I have a couple of employees that I supervise. And, uh, and I also oversee basically the wildlife program for the National Forest. So, you know, when it comes to a National Forest, we have wildlife shop, we have a timber shop, our, uh, our fire shop, as well as uh, recreation. And uh, so I actually oversee the wildlife um, shop for the National Forest. And so that means a typical day for me can be spent either working in the woods with uh, the various different wildlife species we have here on the Conecco, whether that be the red cockaded woodpecker, the indigo snake, gopher tortoise, deer, turkey, quail. It may mean conducting a prescribed fire. In fact, we're we're looking at planning one for tomorrow. So that's probably what I'll be doing tomorrow. Uh, collecting different types of data in the field that we then use back in the office to make decisions. Or my day may be spent uh, totally in the office, meeting with partners or doing fun things like this, interviews with folks, um, planning our work for the year or writing management plans and or even, you know, the not so exciting things like developing our budgets for the upcoming years, you know, but it's all necessary work. That's what helps us um, really accomplish the work on the ground that everybody, you know, gets to see all the recreation uh, users and, and different forest users that come out to the Conecuh. That's cool. I know we like to go hiking all the time in the Conecuh National Forest. Um, so what is your favorite thing about your job? Oh, there's a lot of different things to like about this job, um, but I, when it comes to my favorite thing, I think what I chose was uh, all the dedicated partners and coworkers I get to work with and meet um, throughout the year to accomplish our, our different goals, whether that be wildlife or habitat management, or even, you know, our environmental education goals. Um, those are the folks that make my job a lot of fun, help me succeed in my position. 
And uh, one of the other things I really like about this position is it just, there's a lot of days where it offers new challenges, um, new experiences, and that constantly keeps me on my toes. And, uh, and those new challenges that I face, you know, help me day to day grow as a, as a professional biologist and become a better biologist. Very interesting. So if there's any advice you'd give to the youth um, who want to go into a field similar to like biology, what would you say? Uh, one of the biggest things I would um, offer as, as, as advice is just continue gaining experiences in the outdoors, um, whether that be through opportunities like 4-H, uh, recreational activities on your own time. You mentioned hiking on the National Forest. That's a great way to get out and experience a lot of different things. Um, or even outdoors competitions, uh, such as Envirothon. That was something I participated in when I was in high school that I think really kind of pushed me down this path of becoming a wildlife biologist. Um, and honestly, that's whether it's a career in the outdoors or any other type of career, uh, that's the advice I would offer. Hands-on experience is often the best teacher and will help you really determine whether or not that's ultimately the field that you want to pursue a career in. So whatever experience you can gain um, will kind of help you make ultimately make that decision down the line. Very interesting. Um, speaking about like the experiences and stuff, I was in the wildlife habitat education program for 4-H for two or three years. And um, we had to identify like different animals and species of Alabama. And so mm -hmm. I was wondering how many positively ID'd animals or species or whatever have you seen in, in your time as a biologist? Oh man, if we're talking total species, that's gonna be a pretty big number. Um, you know, I've spent time working in Georgia and then as I mentioned up in New York and then came down to Alabama. Um, when it comes specifically to something like, you know, birds, let's go with birds. Cause there's, uh, you know, when it comes to encountering things out in the woods or out in the field, you know, birds are probably the most frequently encountered species that you run into. Uh, I'd say reliably by sight, I would, uh, I could probably identify a couple hundred birds, maybe 200 or more. Um, by sound, I'd say the number's less, you know, by, by call is a little more challenging, takes a little more time to learn. And uh, I know plenty of people who are absolutely fantastic at identifying birds by all different types of sounds, uh, but I'm still learning when it comes to that area. So I'd say maybe a hundred or more at this time. But uh, as I mentioned, something I'm still working on because I do actually have to conduct um, every spring breeding bird call surveys on the forest. And so that's actually one of my responsibilities now. So uh, whenever I can find the free time, I, I listen to bird calls and, and try to learn what I can. That's very interesting. The only bird I can ID from sound is the bob white. Oh, yeah. Very, <laughs> uh, very distinct, though. That's a good one to know. We... Uh, we not only have those on the forest, but we even have those in town. I've heard them here um, just stepping out of the house in the morning. Sometimes early in the morning, I'll yeah. hear some outside my window. They wake me up. So um, how many ecosystems have you worked in? I know Georgia, New York, and Alabama. Yeah, yeah so ecosystems is another fun one because it's uh, – you can define an ecosystem in a couple different ways, and it really depends on kind of the scale that you're uh, you're looking at. So, for instance, you know, you can look at the Connecticut National Forest as the longleaf pine ecosystem. But within that ecosystem, there are also kind of smaller scale ecosystems, such as our pitcher plant bogs. So really at a fine scale, you know, we can often interact with mul multiple ecosystems daily. Um, you know, you mentioned hiking on the forest earlier, just on that hike, you know, you're, you're kind of passing through multiple different types of ecosystems at a really fine scale. Um, but to try to come up with an answer for your question, uh, I thought maybe we could look at a little bit larger scale, such as eco regions. And so when it comes to eco regions, I can kind of provide a pretty good estimate. So in Alabama, we actually have six ecoregions, and all of my time so far has been spent working in the southeastern plains ecoregion, which actually makes up about uh, half of the state, most of the southern half of the state. 
Um, in Georgia, where I acquired my degrees, there are there were also six ecoregions, and I spent time working in four of those six. So once again, the southeastern plains, just like here in Alabama, uh, but then also in the southern coastal plain, the Piedmont and the Blue Ridge ecoregion. And then in the five years I spent working in New York, I uh, I worked in four ecoregions up there, the Northeastern Highlands, Eastern Great Lakes and Hudson Lowlands, Northeastern Coastal Zone, and Atlantic Coastal Pine Barrens. So as I count it so far, I've worked in uh, eight unique ecoregions eco so far during my career. Wow, very interesting. I, I heard you talk about the pitcher plants and my dad, he, um, he's a game warden with Alabama and so he okay. he knows where the pitcher plants are and so earlier this summer we went and looked at those that's very interesting like yeah there are a couple of um we've got a, a couple of really unique pitcher plant bogs on the Conecuh some that are really well known some that are actually fairly new um and I think we've probably got quite a few more to to kind of recover yet on the forest it's a it's a unique habitat type that can actually be suppressed for quite a while if the overstory um, uh, becomes populated, you know, densely populated with trees and things like that. But if we go in there and we cut those trees out and kind of release the moisture that they were capturing back to the soil, you can actually see a lot of those plants come back up. So I know just in the past year or two, uh, we've actually recovered a, a bog that we didn't know anything about until we went in there and, and uh, conducted some timber removal and turns out all these uh, pitcher plants started popping up after that. So that was really neat. That is neat. So I have a really random question. Um, have you ever been sent away to fight a forest fire or anything like that? I have not in my career, not yet. Um, the position I was in prior to this was not involved in battling wildfires. Um, so really it's just been my current position that I'm in so the past two years, I've you know uh, been in a position where I conduct can conduct prescribed fires, and of those two years, I've only actually been qualified to be able to respond to a wildfire for the past year. So uh, the qualifications to prescribe burn are uh, a little less arduous than the, the qualifications to uh, battle a wildfire, and so. Uh, that's something I was actually able to finally attain last year and just haven't had that opportunity yet. <clears throat> but I'm sure before too long, I'll get that experience and um, and just looking forward when the time comes, looking forward to being able to help out however I can. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all the questions I have for you today. Um, is there anything you'd like to tell the youth in like ending words or whatever? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, it's, it's whether whether you're pursuing a career in the outdoors or, you know, maybe it's in the medical field or whatever it may be. Um, just do whatever you can to to get as much experience as you can and learn as much about it as you can. Um, education's a powerful tool. And as long as you're gaining um, hands on experience, that's really going to help you, as I mentioned earlier, kind of uh, make those decisions down the line as to what really interests you and is going to keep you engaged and excited to get up every single day and go to work. So, um, you know, when it comes to more specifics about, you know, OK, now I've actually obtained my degree in, in, in a wildlife field and I want to know how do I specifically get a job maybe with a state agency or a federal agency. Uh, there's a lot of tips and tricks involved there. And when you get to that point in your career, I would definitely encourage you to reach out to professionals like myself and ask those kinds of questions. Because like I said, we've, we've been through that process. So we, we can help you uh, kind of learn the ins and outs of how to, how to be as competitive as possible for these positions. Um, so when that time comes, feel free to reach out to any one of us, including myself. I'm always happy and uh, willing to speak with people who are interested in this field and answer any questions you may have. That's that's some good advice. Thank you, Mr. Derek. Thank you for taking time out of your day to come and interview with us.
Yeah, thank you, Abigail, for having me. It was a lot of fun. I appreciate it.